Hi, it's me, Jay, and welcome back to our test farm. Today, we're going to take a look at the production of grass, silage, and hay, as well as the field care for your grass fields so you can maximize their yield. Now, the good thing about grass fields is you'll get two to three cuttings per year. which means you'll have plenty of grass, hay, or silage to both feed your animals and to sell. Now, grass is very important because it can be fed to sheep and cows. It can also be turned into hay, which is used to feed, again, sheep, cows, and horses. And the final product grass can be turned into is silage. Silage is used to feed cows and is an integral part of total mixed ration. We'll go into total mixed ration a little bit more when we do a tutorial on cows. Now assuming you've gone ahead and planted your grass field and it's ready to harvest, there are a couple of pieces of equipment we're going to need and we'll go over those. The first piece of equipment, and probably most obvious, is a mower. You'll need something to cut the grass. Let's have a very quick look at what's available in the game in terms of mowers. The first mower is a self-propelled mower. It's the Krone Big M450 which has a 10 meter cutting width and a speed of 15 miles per hour. Looks pretty impressive, doesn't it? Until you look at the list price. It'll cost you $380,000, euros or pounds. But there are cheaper options, especially if you're starting out. There's the push mower, which has a working width of only two meters and a maximum speed of five miles an hour. I'd use this more to clear up your garden, other small areas where grass grows. It'll take you forever to do a field with this. Now if we go to tools and we look at mowers, you can see there are several different pull-behind mowers available to attach to your tractors. The first mower is only 2.4 meters. The plus is it requires 40 horsepower, so very easy to operate. Next mower up is 4 meters, and it's basically a hay bind which conditions the grass in real life. It conditions the grass as you mow. Breaking the stems to release a little bit of moisture. This obviously is not simulated in the game, but it is something a haybine does in real life. You've got a side mower, which is 4.4 meters. We'll get into these mowers in a second, but you also have the Elho mower, which actually has a decent working width of 7.3 meters, but does require 180 horsepower. Now, let's take a look at the coon mowers. You've got the rear mower that requires 120 horsepower and has a working width of 8.3 meters. The second part is the front mower which goes on the front of the tractor so you don't miss a swath down the middle. It's got a 3.1 working width and requires 60, mile, 60 horsepower. Also mows at 13 miles an hour. So that's a nice combination if you want to get some field work done quickly. Now here's my favorite, the Pottinger. Just like the Coon, you've got the rear mower at 75,000.
and you've got the front mower at 13500 It's quite a bit more expensive than the coon, but as I said, you have a 10 meter working width on this one and it travels at 13 miles an hour. Now, one thing most people are fascinated with, especially when their farms get big, is the Crone Big M that we had a look at earlier. $380,000 versus the Pottinger. $75,000 plus $13,500. Um, that's quite a bit cheaper than the Crone Big M, and it does pretty much exactly the same thing. The only thing you lose is two miles an hour of speed. So it will cover a lot of ground, and you can use it with an existing tractor. That's why I recommend it to most people over the Crone Big M. Now, if you want the Big M for show, nice, big, flashy, self-propelled implement, and you've got the money, go ahead. So let's hop into our tractor and we'll start mowing our field. I'll just turn on the help menu so you can see the different options. Just like the Crone Big M, the Pottinger is capable, as I said, of creating a swath or wide spreading. A swath down the middle is very handy if you're just going to be picking up grass and you don't want you don't need a windrake or anything like that to put it into a row. It does it automatically. So we have it to swath dropping right now. Start the engine. Now, you do need to start both the front mower and the rear mower separately. So let's lower it down, start it up, move forward a little bit, and then by pressing G, we go to our back mower, and we start that one up as well. And away we go. See how it's putting it into a nice little swath right down the middle? At least I'm very, very handy. I usually go around the outside of the field first. Create a headland. Now the field grass on the sides of the field isn't quite as productive as the grass in the field itself. But it's definitely a bonus and gives you a little bit more yield as you can mow, just like you do the field grass. It's not affected by fertilizer or lime or anything like that. It's just there. See, we're cruising along at 14 miles an hour. And we've pretty much got our first headland. Go. Nope. can mow over your swaths and it's not going to affect anything. You'll also notice in this field that there's a little part down the edge where it's not mowing. That grass is still growing. My fault. did an experiment, it didn't work, so that grass didn't grow at the same rate as the rest of the field. Mowers can also be operated by hired helpers, which is great because it allows you to move on to other things. So we're going to put this mower onto a helper, and then we're going to look at some of the other requirements. There, so he stops, and he comes right up to the uh, headland you made. 
Okay, so if this was a regular mower instead of a swath dropping mower, the next thing we would need is either a windrow to put it into a, a row, or if we're making hay, a tether. While our help is busy mowing the field, let's take a look and see what's available. Again, tethers come in a different size depending on the price and what you need. A basic tether is only going to cost you $7,000 but only has a working width of 4.4. The largest pottinger has a 17 meter working width speed of 9 miles an hour but it requires 100 horsepower and it's $31,000. Basically what a tether does, for those unfamiliar, is it flips up the grass so that the grass that was underneath is now on top and can be dried by the sun to turn it into hay. Note that when a tether goes through the field, it'll tend to spread the hay out a bit. So even if you've made a nice swath and you use a tether, you will require a windrower to put it back into a nice row. Several different options for windrowers, ranging from the basic 2.5 meter, all the way up to the Kuhn GA51131 at $62,000. It's got a fairly good working width of 14.7 meters and works at 9 miles an hour. So as you can see, our help is progressing fairly well, maintaining a steady speed of 14 miles an hour. And he's cutting up to where we put our headlamps. When he's done a little bit more work, or when the field's done, I'll bring you guys back in and you can look at the next step in the process. We'll be right back. Okay, as you can see, we're finished mowing the field. And the first thing you'll probably notice is that halfway through, I turned off swath dropping and put it onto wide spreading. So you can see the difference between the way the mole works, depending on what you need. We'll use our nice windrows to make our gr grass bales and silage. We'll use the widespreaded parts of the field to ted and make our hay. So let's go ahead and we'll move the mower out of the field so we can begin with the next part. More. And we'll just park it over here. Now as you can see around the house, probably a perfect spot for you to use the push mower as a wide mower like this is really not going to be that maneuverable and won't end up looking that good. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to collect some plot grass using a forage wagon. Just like balers, tethers, windrowers, there's a couple of different forage wagons available in the game. If you go into tools and forage wagons you can see small basic one works at 10 miles an hour and I'll hold 16,000 liters as the price goes up so does the capacity the biggest in the game is the Stroman Magnum Magnon CFS 530 DO and it holds 50,000 liters or 50 cubic meters of grass, hay, or straw, or silage. So 
So we've got our forage wagon ready, and we'll head out to the field. Just open the lid so we can see what's going on. Now, a big forage wagon like this does require a fairly high horsepower tractor. Line up, because you're pulling a lot of weight. Turn it on, and away we go. Now, this animation is new for anyone. Oh, back up. We've got to do something. First, we have to lower the pickup, and then we can turn on the forage wagon. Now, you'll notice that there's a new animation. If you look closely in Farming Simulator 22, where the grass actually looks like it's being fed up into the forage wagon and doesn't just magically appear. As I said, if you take a look at we're doing our headlands, which is mainly game grass, and we're not getting a fairly high yield from that. But it's still better than nothing, and it's a bonus. Why not take advantage of it while you can? Around we go. Just got to be careful as you go around corners so you don't miss bits. And we could probably fill this forage wagon with half of our fields if we wanted to. But we're not going to do that. to 10,000 liters already. So not bad, not bad. You'll see when we go down the next row, the speed at which it fills the forage wagon is really going to pick up. So I'm going to fill the forage wagon, or at least half fill it, and I'll be right back with you. I'll just bring you quickly back in so you can see how much quicker the forage wagon is loading. Definitely a lot better than our uh, headlands where we using game grass. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. And as you can see, we've done about half the field and got about 55-56% of a trailer full of grass. If we had animals, we could take that grass directly to them and put it in their troughs to feed them. Since we don't have animals, we're going to take the grass and put it in the bunker silo and turn it into silage. Now note, there's a placeable building, which is already here on Obey Laurent, which is a hay bar. And it will take hay and straw, but as you can see, there is no option for it to take grass. That's why we're going to put the grass into a bunker silo. Now when you're spreading grass into your bunker silo, I recommend moving slightly in so it doesn't spill when we're compacting it. And that you move down the bunker silo slowly unloading in a row so that you don't have a great big stack. It's a lot easier to compact the row than it is a big pile. So let's un start unloading here. As you can see it opens up and we'll move slowly down the bunker silo and let it unload. There we go. Now, we'll just put our forage wagon off to the side. And I'll show you how to compact the silage. I'll compact the grass and turn it into silage. Now, the bigger and heavier the tractor you have, the quicker the bunker silo will compact. There are also tools available that will aid 
in compacting your bunker silo. So you won't pass, we're at a 25% compaction. We'll just back up and go forward until a compaction. Oh, see, this is why you don't put it in a big pile. You got stuck. Seventy-one percent. We're almost there. Eighty, eighty-five, ninety. One more push should do it. And we're now at a hundred percent. The next step: we'll do the blanket our silo and let the fermenting process start. But I want to try something first before we blanket. As you can see I started emptying my forage wagon a little bit early and we have some grass that spilled out of the bunker silo while we were compacting it. That's not going to ferment. There we go, we'll just pass the tractor, park the tractor. And we'll take a quick look at making grass bales before we look at making silage bales. So here's our baler. It's just a basic round baler. The Kuhn VB3190. It can make bales varying in size from 125 centimeters to 180 centimeters. Now there are several different balers in the game, ranging from the Massey Ferguson 1840, which makes small square bales, which are able to handle by hand. Then you've got balers that will automatically wrap for you. And lastly, we've got the big square balers that will make bales ranging in size from 180 centimeters to 240 centimeters. None of the big balers come with an automatic wrapper. Okay, so back to our round baler. As you can see, we're set to 125 centimeters for our round bales. We can change the capacity by pressing L. 150 centimeters. 180 centimeters, back to 125 centimeters. So let's lower the pickup. We'll start the baler. And we'll make our first grass bale. Now, as I said, 125 centimeters is the smallest round bale you can make in the game. And if we have enough grass, we'll try and look at some of the larger bales. Once the round baler reaches 100 percent, you have to stop and you have to press V to unload the baler. Sorry, Y to unload the baler. Y again, and now let's try and make a slightly larger one, 150 centimeters, away we go. Oop. I always do that, I forget to turn the baler back on, over the header. And away we go. As you can see, it's filling up a lot slower because it's compacting the bale a lot more.
and it doesn't look like we're going to have quite enough grass to make a full bale at this size. Uh, we might actually. Yep, there we go. So there's that second bale. I'm not going to use the last of that strip just because I want to show you the wrapper next. So let's go ahead and we'll park this baler. Oh, I forgot to turn it off. Let's unhook that. <coughs> and, as you can see from the field, pretty much what we have left is our unrolled grass. So the next implement we're going to need is our windroller. We've already covered the windrows in game. So let's hook up let's create one more windrow so that we can make a silage bale. First thing you have to do is unfold it. Which takes a second or two. It's not that long. As you can see, it's got a nice wide width to it. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn it on. And we'll make one pass down the field for now. As you can see, the windrower can also be operated by an AI worker, which is very handy. So you can basically be mowing with an AI worker, tedding and windrowing if you've got a big enough field ahead of the baler. The baler is the only piece of equipment you actually need to operate yourself. You can't have a worker do it. Okay, let's have a quick look. I don't think it's very high, but I just want to double check the um, Horsepower requirement. Yeah, 145 horsepower, so we're fine with this tractor to go ahead if we wanted to and attach it to the baler. But we're going to leave it here since we've already got a tractor attached. And we're going to start making our silage bales. You'll also notice that since we cut the grass, and bailed it, the fertilized state of the field is now only 50%. We'll take a look at a couple of different options to improve that once we're done our bailing. Let's go ahead and start our engine. lower our header and turn the baler on. You see the tractor rev up. And away we go. We're on, I believe, the smallest size, so it shouldn't take that long to make our first round bale. Now, for those of you that are familiar with Farming Simulator 19, there was, oop, there was a round baler. You still have to stop. There was a round baler that would allow you to keep baling while it wrapped the bale in the back. Farming Simulator 22 does not have that baler yet. Hopefully, it's coming as a mod. So let's unwrap our round bale.
and we'll go ahead and hopefully make another one. There we go, 80, 90, 90, 98, 100. See, bail goes out. The wrapper will wrap it. Now you can start bailing at this point since the uh, chamber is empty. But we'll go ahead and we'll drop that bail. You can also turn on automatic drop if you want, which will drop the bail once it's wrapped. And as we don't require very much for our next bail, we'll just head down the side here and pick up some loose grass till we get to one more bail. Ninety-five, ninety-six, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, a hundred. There's the next bail made. Now, as you can see. Round bales have a habit of rolling. Once they're made, depending on the slope of the field. It can actually be quite amusing sometimes to see the bale roll down the field and into the road and block traffic. Although it's probably not that amusing for the driver. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll drop off our uh, baler. And now we're going to make some hay. We need to attach our tether. out of the shed and unfold it. We're not going to use the wrapper again, but just for your information, the same baler that wrapped the grass into silage can also wrap hay bales, which will also become silage. Oh, since our bales are in the field, I just want to cover our silo. Because I want to see whether the silo becomes silage first, or whether the round bales become silage first, or if they both turn into silage at the same time. I was watching one of Dagawin's videos the other day and it appeared the bunker silo was fairly quick to make silage whereas the hay bales needed to sit for a couple of days before they actually became silage. So let the AI worker go ahead and ted this field. Although he doesn't seem to want to. Maybe because we we're already started? I'm not sure. And that's why he's having trouble finding the field. Try one more time. Otherwise, we'll just do it ourselves. Yeah, let's just do it ourselves. I really do like the width on this tether. As you can see, as I said, it's basically taking the grass, tedding it, so the wet grass on the bottom moves to the top and dries out. In Farming Simulator, this happens automatically as soon as you ted the grass, or as in real life, you mow the field, give it a day to dry, ted it, give it another day to dry, and then go ahead and bale it into hay. 
This is much easier. Trust me. So there we go. We've got a tetted grass. Let's fold up the tatter. And we'll put it back in the shed in a minute. Let's find that wind roller. There it is. And let's go ahead and windrow the last part of the field. I love these tractors. It's the John Deere 6155 series. Found in small tractors. Sorry, 6M series, not 6155. That was the old series. But they range in power from 130 to 140 horsepower and can do most of your basic field work when it comes to grass. The only thing they can't really pull are a big mower like we had at the beginning and they can't pull the great big square balers. That's their only disadvantage. But they're a very versatile little tractor. And will allow you to attach a front loader to them. Which we're going to need in a little while as we load our bales. Let's see if this has any better luck. With the AI work. I doubt it. Oh no. The AI workers detected the field this time. It's very strange that it didn't uh, didn't detect it with the uh, with the tether. So we're just going to let our worker go ahead and bale the field. Sorry, not bale the field. Windrow the uh, dry grass. And I'll bring you guys back in once that's done. Alright, now that the last of the field has been windrowed, let's go ahead and we'll make some hay bales. As I said, the class baler with the wrapper can take hay just like it takes grass, wrap it, and it will turn into silage. square baler does not have that option. Let's go ahead and lower the header. Unfold the tool. Basically unfold the baler just so it and we'll turn it on. I love how the RPMs on these tractors and farms like a 22 kick right up to power the equipment. 19, you didn't hear the change very much until you actually got bailing. We're on 180 centimeters square bales. As you can see, it's taking a little bit longer to fill up than the round bins. I turn crop destruction, destruction off when I'm playing, mainly because the fields are very close and you don't have a lot of turning, especially if you're working with an AI helper. They will drive right into that next field crush your crops. So while it's a little bit more realistic, it's definitely more of a pain. Okay, we're out of hay. 
So we'll turn the baler off. We'll go over here. And we'll unload the bale. You don't have an option to unload a round bale. It's automatically done for you. Just open the bag and it's done. Whereas a square baler, as it pushes them out in a constant stream, if you want to get that last bale out, you actually have to unload it. had more cries it would be a much better I could make a much better demonstration of that. So let's turn off our round baler for a second and we'll go and have a look at those square bales. As you can see these are far too heavy to pick up. Now for those of you familiar with Farming Simulator 19, the standard bale, whether it was a round bale or a square bale, was 4,000 liters. As you can see, even on the smaller setting, this bale contains 6,000 liters of hay and weighs 350 kilograms. Now the weight, again, wasn't something they put in Farming Simulator 19. Our silage bales are a little bit less than the standard in Farming Simulator 19 at 3,500 liters. But because they've got more moisture, you can see they weigh almost twice as much as a hay bale does. Same with a grass bale. Grass has a lot of moisture in it, whereas hay's had all that moisture dried out. So the weight changes. Okay, let's take the baler out of the field. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can pick up the, the bales. first option we have is a trailer like this one. Take a front end loader with a bale spike on it. Just pick the bales up and you load them onto the trailer. This is probably not the best bale spike for us to be using since we're going to be dealing with silage bales as well and a bale spike would just punch holes in the wrap which would not make for very good silage what you should uh, what we should be using and if I can find it here A round bale fork, like this, just goes underneath the bale, picks it up, and then you can drop it on the trailer. Farming Simulator 19, I think there was... Yeah, something similar to this one. Um where the arm opens up around the round bale and then closes again. This way, you're not puncturing the plastic. But those are your two options in Farming Simulator 22 to pick up round bales, or silage bales specifically. Okay, we'll go get our tractor with the bale spike on it. I know I said I was going to put uh, Teta back in the shed, but we'll do that later. Okay, 
what we'll do is we'll put the bales side by side so that we can see the difference in size. Now this bale spike can actually, depending on the size of the bale, pick up one to two bales. Two small bales or one large round bale. to get both bale spikes into it, but no, it looks like it'll just be one again. I will take that and put it beside the other bales. So you can see the difference in size between the small and the medium bale. and the silage bales, which are about the same size as the small bale. Let's load up those square bales. Put them on the trailer. Now, if you notice, one of the nice things about the game is it'll actually tell you when you've got something on the front loader, what it is. You can see the hay symbol, and it'll tell you how many liters it is. There's one. enough for demonstration purposes, but we'll go ahead and we'll put the second bale on there. Oddly enough, if you only get one spike through, the square bale stays straight and doesn't drop around, which it would do in real life. Now, assuming we had a full trailer, we could then take it to our animals, or we could take it to the animal dealer to sell the hay. The other nice thing about Farming Simulator 22 is when you've got your trailer loaded, not doing it on this one of course some of the trailers will actually tell you how many I don't want to say bales but how many liters of hay or grass is on that trailer so park this here you can, of course, strap your bales down to stop them flying around. Very important on the road because you do not want to lose a bale in traffic. Now, as you can see, loading bales onto a trailer is fairly time consuming. You have to drive around the field, pick up the bales. drive back to the trailer and stack them on the trailer. So what other options are there? Let's 
have a look in the bailing technology. This is another attachment which can go on the tractor. It can pick up two round bales at a time. And you can have it both on the front hydraulic gear and the rear. So you can carry four bales per tractor. Personally, my favorite is the automatic stacker by Anderson. It'll cost you $50,500, but for the amount of time it saves, I think it's definitely worth it. It can carry a total of 24 round bales, and they can range in size from 125 centimeters to 180 centimeters. So we'll go ahead and we'll buy one of those, and we'll demonstrate it. Now, there is also an auto load trailer. It's quite a bit more expensive, but it's for square bales, and it can carry all the different sizes. If you want to use the trailer that we were using, the bit just the plain bale trailer, you can also get the Arcusen four stack 8.12, which drive around the field. It'll pick up three bales and it'll put them into a stack of three, three high, which you can then pick up with your front loader and drive back to the trailer. Since you're driving around the field in the first place, and then having to drive back, pick the bales up, and then put them on the trailer, I personally don't feel you're saving a lot of time. I would much rather use the automatic bale stacker. But it is fairly expensive and it's definitely not for every farm. The plain trailer with a front end loader at $19,500 is a much better deal. Anyway, just to show you how it works, Sorry, farmer, for driving through your field, but it's the quickest way to get there. We're going to go to the store, and we're going to pick up the round bale auto loader, and I'll give you a quick demonstration of how it works. Oh, while we're here, there was one more thing I wanted to show you. We were using the Pottinger, the Coon mower, front mower and rear mower. As I said earlier, it's a little bit narrower, but if you look in the options, it does not have the ability to create a swath. So everything is just laid out as wide as the mower goes, and you will need a windrower. Whether it's grass or hay, you'll need a windrower to put it into a nice manageable row for your bailer. Alright, back to the auto loader. And again, cut through this nice farmer's field to get back to our field. Now you'll notice these trailers, and like the balers, have the option in the help menu of having an AI worker. They will not automatically drive around the field and pick up your bales for you. What they will do is they will allow you to, say, start from this parking lot and tell your tractor with a trailer full of bales to go to the sell point, unload, and then come back. So you can keep bailing or doing whatever you're doing while that trailer is unloading. When it gets back, you can load up another load, send it off, and keep on bailing. Okay, let's put it into the operating position.
and we'll go ahead and we'll pick up the silage bales. There it goes. One. Two. And three. You can get out of your tractor, as you've just seen, and you can actually see your round bales. Silage bales, and check on how much the fermentation process is. Let's go ahead and we'll see if we can pick up the last two bales. Nope, because you can only pick up one slice at a time. So, when baling the field, you need to decide on what size bales you can produce. It tells us that it's a nice round grass bale. So we'll put it back into the transporting position. And unloading this is very, very simple. Just drive or back up to where you want to unload the bales. Press Y. Fortunately, we missed the barn. It'll push the bales to the end of the trailer, lift up, and drop them in a nice stack. Do I want to unload the bales here? Well, yes, I do. Okay, maybe it doesn't make a nice stack, but it puts them in a nice long row. I think it's a square bale that puts them in a nice pile upwards. Turn that off and we'll go get that last. bale out of the field because then I want to go over the field carefully for a little bit. Okay, well I think about it, one more thing to mention. We have a grass bale here, no wrap around it. So it's just gonna stay, if we put it in the shed, away from the rain, it's just gonna stay as a grass bale. There we go. And it'll just sit there until you need it. There is something you can do with that bale to turn it into silage, even though we didn't wrap it while baling. Or something you can buy from the store that will really help out. And that is bale wrappers. The first one, the Curveland. Kervernerland, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that one. We'll take round bales and wrap them. You just drive up to it, it'll pick up the round bale, it'll wrap it and it'll drop it again. The Coon SW4014 will do the same thing, either with round bales or with square bales. And now you've got the two Anderson extractors. One will do round bales, and one will do both round and square bales. Now these are a little bit different, because you take them to the field and they're pretty much stationary. What you do is you drop a bale, 
onto the rollers here, it's fed into the wrapper, it's wrapped, and then it gets, I'm sorry, if you put it on the front, it gets wrapped, and then it gets pushed down the rollers. As more and more bales are added, the machine slowly moves down the field, leaving a string of wrapped round bales, kind of like a great big round sausage. We'll definitely go over that in another video. Alright, field care. Apparently rollers are supposed to help. Now this was the experiment that I was telling you about earlier. Where I ended up with that patch of grass at the end of the field that I wasn't quite sure what to do with. Okay, so we've harvested our field. We'll take our roller. We'll move down the field. Just put a worker on. As you can see from the texture, it's adding a second state of fertilizer to that field. Let's hop out and see what the field state says. Ah, we're back up to 100%. Whereas the unrolled part of the field is only a 50% fertilizer. This means we don't need to add any artificial fertilizer liquid fertilizer to the field, we can just roll it and bring it back to 100% growth rate. As you can see, even though we've rolled it, it's still growing. Now, don't roll grass that's stage 2 of its growth or it'll put it right back to the basic state and you'll need to wait for it to grow again. That was the mistake I made when I rolled this part. It was full grass, ready to harvest. I rolled it and it put it back to its most basic state. But it did add a second fertilizing state to it, so that was a plus. And it looks like our roller got stuck. Probably not the best place we could have parked the uh, the forage wagon, but it'll do. And there goes our roller. Ah, shoot, it's missing a small strip, but that doesn't matter. Okay, as I said, there was one more experiment I wanted to do, and that was regarding silage fermentation times. A silo is at 2% fermented. And that grass bale is also at 2%. They were done roughly within half an hour to an hour at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let those ferment. We'll sleep overnight. We'll come back each day and check on the fermentation levels. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so one day is passed, or almost passed. We're an hour away from 24 hours. And... The silage pit is at 97% fermentation. So by 9 o'clock, it should be at 100%. And our silage bales are also at 97%. So both seem to ferment at the same time. 
are in the same amount of time. I'm not sure what was happening in uh, Dagowin's video, but um, that's that question asked. And as you can see, a day has passed and the grass is nearly uh, half growing again. It's at that nice dark state, that strip that we had rolled, but we didn't roll again, is ready to harvest. So it looks like grass takes about a month to two months from cutting to the next harvest. Okay, that's everything for this video. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like to see more tutorial videos, please hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll definitely be bringing you more content. Thank you, and have a great day.